So in this video, we're gonna be going over this device right here. This is a soft starter. This thing actually offers a ton of reasons for any homeowner to at least consider adding this to their AC unit. And in this video, I'm gonna get into all of those reasons. I'm gonna go over all of the features that this has to offer. And I'm also gonna show you how it's installed. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. All right, so this is the Micro Air Easy Start Soft Starter. Now, of course, one of the big draws for these and initially what got me to buy one of these was that you're able to be able to run an AC unit using a portable generator. A lot of times a portable generator can't run an AC unit due to the inrush amperage of that unit. In order to start that compressor up, it takes a lot of amperage to get them started up. Well, with this unit installed, it will actually reduce the amperage that it requires to start up that compressor by anywhere from about 55% all the way up to around 75% reduction. And where this is called a soft starter, a lot of people have heard of hard start kits that are installed on AC units because they've been around for so long. And that was kind of the go-to for people if they wanted to be able to run their unit using a generator. The difference is a hard start kit basically is not going to reduce the amperage that's required for the AC unit to start up. What it's going to do is it's basically going to provide extra torque or some extra power to get that compressor started up faster. Whereas with a soft starter, the way it works is it's going to start the fan first of the AC unit. And then once that fan starts, then it's gonna gradually ramp up the power or the amps needed in order to start up that compressor with as little amperage as possible. And therefore it truly is going to require less power in order to get the compressor started. That is going to extend the life of the compressor by quite a bit. And any of you that have ever had a compressor replaced, you know that it is not a cheap replacement and it's really not a DIY project. So you're going to have to have an HVAC tech come and do it and you're talking about thousands of dollars. So that's one big pro for a soft start kit. Another one is that this will actually act as a sacrificial device. And what I mean by that is this will basically act as a surge protector so that in the event of a sudden surge, this is what will take the brunt of it and it will not pass on to your AC unit. And aside from those two things, this also serves as a diagnostic tool. As you can see, it's got a Bluetooth symbol on it. It offers Bluetooth capabilities to connect with your phone. And they have an app that's gonna give you a lot of information that you would not normally have or be able to get without having this or some other device or an HVAC tech to tell you. Issues that this is able to diagnose and is looking for is in case there's unexpected current, if you've had a power interruption, if you've had a compressor stall, if there's an open overload, if you have an overcurrent issue, and it's even going to tell you if you have some sort of a wiring issue within the unit. A couple of really common issues that this device can actually fix are if your lights flicker when your AC kicks on and or your AC makes a loud noise on startup, possibly even waking you up at night, then this soft star will most likely fix those issues due to the substantially lower draw of current. And if you are one that is wanting to use this in order to be able to run your AC with a portable generator, then installing this will oftentimes save you around $2,000 or more right off the bat as you won't need as large of a generator as you would have. So this really can solve a lot of issues and save a ton of money in the short and long term. So you'll need to know if your unit is a two ton or a four ton or even a five ton unit and then get the soft starter that matches up with that tonnage. A lot of times this information is listed right on the side of the unit on a spec label. And it might not list how many tons the unit is, but a lot of times in the product number, right in the middle of that product number, there'll be a number that sticks out. So for example, on my unit, right in the middle of that product number is the number 48. Well, that number 48 is saying that that unit is 48,000 BTUs and one ton equals 12,000 BTUs. So if we take that number 48, and we divide it by 12, we get the number four, which means my unit is a four ton unit. And if yours says 60, then you have a five ton unit and so on and so on. And just to make everything a whole lot easier, I'll have a sizing chart for all this down in the description down below, along with links to everything that you see in this video from the soft starters to the tools to all the materials that I use in order to make this installation possible and as easy as possible. So the first thing I wanna do before I do anything is I wanna disconnect power from the house going to the AC unit. So I wanna open up my disconnect box and in my case, there's this pull out that I just pull out and it can either be turned upside down and put back in, but I typically just pull it out, put it on top of the box and close the box. Then I can remove the panel from my AC unit. There are four screws holding my panel on and I can remove those screws using a 5 16 nut driver. Once those screws are removed, then I can just pull the panel down and away from the unit. 
I'm going to turn my power back on to my AC unit so that I can do a test to get an initial inrush reading to see how many amps this is taking in order to start up that compressor. All right, so the power is back onto the unit, and now I'm going to turn on my clamp meter. I'm going to put it over here to where it says A with the alternating current symbol. Then I'm going to select inrush, so I can get an inrush reading. This yellow wire that's running up here is my compressor run wire. So I'm going to put this multimeter and clamp it on over here. So our amperage required to start up that compressor without a soft start kit is 125.4 amps. And then again, disconnect the power from the house to the AC unit in the disconnect box. Hey, really quickly, if you didn't know about this device or you're at least finding this to be interesting, if you could do me a huge favor, all I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up right down below or leave me a question or comment down in the comment section. It really does help the video to spread out to other people and hopefully be able to help them out with this as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. All right, so you can install the soft start kit pretty much anywhere. If you have space inside of the AC unit, I do not have enough space, but a lot of units do. If you have enough space, you can mount it in there. For me personally, I made up this little wooden shelter, if you will, for it that I anchored down into the concrete pad. Now that I've got my soft starter mounted where I want it to go, now I just need to feed my wiring into the unit. All right, so before I start working on anything in here, I wanna make sure that my capacitor is discharged. Now this should happen naturally. It's very rare that a capacitor still holds onto a charge, but it is possible. But what most HVAC technicians will do is they'll just take their screwdriver or nut driver and they'll take the metal portion, holding onto the insulated portion, take the metal part of that screwdriver or nut driver and just run it across the tops of the terminals. So I like to run from my common terminal to my Herm terminal, and then my common to my fan, just to make sure that this capacitor is in fact discharged. Now, if you have a hard start kit installed on your AC unit already, that needs to be removed before starting to install the soft start kit. They cannot work together. Now the soft start kit comes with four wires that are gonna to have to be connected in different places, and they're gonna require different connectors in order to do so. You're gonna want some of these female disconnects, you're also gonna want some of these ring or spade connectors, and then you're also gonna want some butt connectors. So the first wire that I'm gonna to need to hook up is this orange wire right here. And that orange wire is gonna get connected over here on this Herm terminal. If you look at the top of the capacitor, you'll see where this one says C. This C is for the common, so these are the common terminals. Over here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says H-E-R-M, Herm or Hermetic. And then back here on the back, this is the fan terminal. So I want to take my orange wire and just kind of twist those strands together. Then I'm going to take one of these female spade connectors and then I'm just going to insert the orange wire into that spade connector. Then once that's in place, I'll take my crimping tool and I'll just crimp that spade connector to the wire. And so now that's crimped into place nice and tight. And now I'm going to slide that female connector on my orange wire onto one of those male terminals on the Herm terminal. Now the next wire I'm going to connect is this brown wire here and that brown wire needs to be connected to the compressor run wire. Now the compressor run wire is going to be attached to the contactor. And one way that you can find that is if you go back to your capacitor and you look for the C or common terminal, then if you follow that all the way back to the contactor, you can figure out which one of these is your compressor run wire. So obviously mine is this larger yellow one. So what I need to do is I need to remove this yellow wire from the contactor. Now I wanna remove or cut off this ring connector. Now that I've got that connector removed, now I wanna take a butt connector. I'm gonna put my compressor run wire in one side of that butt connector. Then I'll take my brown wire that's coming from the soft starter and insert it into the other side of the butt connector. Then I'll just take my crimper and crimp the butt connector. And then just give those a good pull and verify that they aren't just gonna come out. So the next wire that gets connected is this white wire here. Then I'll take my new ring connector and insert it onto the wire. And then I'll just take my crimping tool again and crimp it down. And now this gets connected where the compressor run wire was over here on this side of the contactor. So I'm just gonna remove that screw out, insert that screw into the ring, and then reattach it to that side of the contactor. And then last but not least, we have our black wire. I'm gonna attach another ring connector to this black wire. Same steps as before, pushing the wire up into that ring connector make sure that it's seated and then once it's seated use the crimping tool and crimp it down then once that's crimped on this also gets attached to the contactor but it gets attached to the opposite side from where we put this white wire it's going to go over here on the other side of the contactor where, where this other black wire is so again i'm just going to remove that screw 
Gonna insert that screw into the ring and then reattach and screw it down into the contactor. So now I'm gonna go ahead, turn the power back onto the AC unit and then it needs to start up and stop five times. And what it's doing is it's learning your particular AC unit, how it can best optimize your AC unit. All right, so I've done the five learning starts. So now it should be optimized enough in order for a generator to run this. So I'll go ahead, turn on the thermostat and see what we got. So as you can see, we now have 35.8 for our inrush amperage. Our original reading was 125.4 amps. So this is a massive reduction in the amount of amperage that's required in order to start up that compressor. It's a little bit over a 70% reduction in amperage required. So now we can go ahead and cover up the unit and test it with a generator. All right, so I've got my big generator hooked up currently to the house. Now I just need to get into the main panel. I'm gonna turn off the main breaker to simulate a power outage. Flip over the interlock kit to then turn on the generator breakers. So now energy can be fed from the generator to my main breaker panel. And I'm gonna leave all of my other breakers on and I'm still gonna try and run the AC unit with it. That's why I bought this bigger generator so I could run everything on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the generator. I'll turn on the AC to see how much it pulls it down. So there the AC just kicked on, so you heard it pull it down just briefly. But the AC unit is up and running, and so is the rest of the entire house. So with the soft starter on the AC unit, with that particular generator, it almost didn't affect it at all. But let's try a little bit smaller generator and see if it can run it. All right, so now I've got my smaller generator. It is hooked up to the house and this has 5,500 running watts, but it does have 6,875 peak or starting watts. So this is gonna be maybe a little bit under the size of what most people own or right around what most people own, but I've never tried this before to start my AC unit with it. So I kind of have my doubts whether or not this is gonna be able to handle it. I do have the AC unit circuit breaker on and some regular lighting circuits for inside my house. So. We'll see if it's able to start it up. And yes, that is a 50 amp power inlet box and a 50 amp cord, but I'm using this 30 amp to 50 amp adapter just to do this test. So I'll go ahead and turn the AC unit on. All right, so as you heard, it did pull it down, but it appears that the AC unit is running. And over here at the AC unit, everything appears to be working properly. The air inside is blowing cold and it's not making any weird noises. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised that even my very small generator, it really didn't seem like it had to struggle hardly at all to get this AC unit up and running. So obviously having the soft starter makes a huge difference because I would have never been able to do that before. Now, if you'd like to see the installation and how I went about being able to connect those generators to my house, I'll post a link to that video right over here where it goes into detail on the installation that I did and also some of the safety precautions that need to be taken. So I hope that you found this video to be interesting. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.